Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is my 10th video in my 2020 series on seed starting indoors if you want to subscribe and follow it. So coming all the way up to today, we started my plants in just plain starting mix. And I did that because I want to keep it simple for first time gardeners. You don't need to add anything really when you're starting your seeds into your starting mix. And then we progress to adding in uh, water soluble fertilizer fish emulsion, organic types, and you can even use the chemical types, but we wanted to cut them really down to well below a 111 N, P, and K. Now, this is how I do it. You can add amendments to your starting mix, but you don't want to add insoluble organic fertilizers like blood meal, bone meal, uh, chicken manures, any kind of dried organic fertilizer because there's no soil life in here. Remember we use boiling water to take care of this so there was no uh, bad fungi or no fungus net eggs or anything in there. If you put in insoluble fertilizers it doesn't hurt your plants but it'll grow a mold and fungus on there for a bit because that type of fertilizer needs soil life to break it down change it from an insoluble form into a soluble form which means the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium can be used by your plant. Just a quick refresher, the water-soluble fertilizers have N, P, and K that are immediately ready for your plant. So you could add in worm castings. It's what I do. It's what I recommend. The company that I've been working with for at least four years now is Vermistera. Pound per pound, you get worm castings in their product. You don't just get some worm castings and other filler compost or anything like that. Their products are aged about seven years, maybe longer. They're um, sifted, you're getting worm castings. And what do I like about worm castings? Right in there, it's an N, P, and K of 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, nice and low. Worm castings also bring in growth hormones, good microbiology, all the things that your plants are going to need. I used to also use the worm casting tea which down at the bottom, it's a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 NP and K. Also adds in good beneficial microbes and growth hormones. This is all you really need for your seed starts. I use these products for starting seeds. I use these products in my potting up soil, and I use it in my containers, and I also use it when I'm establishing, establishing, yeah, establishing, yeah, what's going on? Establishing plants in the garden. And I'll show you how to do all that in future videos. So how do I set up my seed starting mix? It's pretty simple. Let me take these out. So the ratio, I'm just gonna give you a general ratio and I'm actually gonna do it by hand. But when you buy a bag of the Jiffy, Jiffy starting mix, that's what I used in the beginning, I think it's 12 quarts. So I basically put in one cup of the worm castings. And let me just show you how nice this is. I mean that is sifted castings. That's not a bunch of other stuff with a little bit of castings thrown in there. So I do one cup of castings to about six to eight quarts or about a half a bag of the Jiffy starting mix. You don't need to put in more. Um, one cup works perfectly fine. You could even put in a little bit less. What I have found if I put in too much it does slow germination, germination down a little bit, but nothing significant. So the ratio that I worked out was really one cup per six to eight quarts of your starting mix. And it could be Chiffy starting mix, it could be Cocoa Core, and you can sort of eyeball it. And that's kind of what I do now. So, I don't know, maybe there's eight quarts in there. And I'm going to take... That's almost a cup, about a cup worth of the castings, and I'm just going to mix it through. Mix it through really well, pull the corners out, and this is my preferred way to start seeds. There's no insoluble organic fertilizers in here that are going to kind of sit, um, sometimes smell, mold, and, and get fungus on them. Again, that's not going to hurt the plants, but it's unsightly. There's no chemical fertilizers in there because you don't really need it. It's just the worm castings, which I like to call the end product of nature, which again have growth hormones, 
uh, good bacteria microbes, and a nice low level of N, P, and K. And for 2020, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I'm going to be turning my whole garden into a no-dig garden and really trying to mimic nature. I don't mind using um, non-organic products sometimes. That's why I like to say I'm 90% organic. But I'm really going to try and um, just follow nature. All right, so that's all you have to do to kind of set up your starting mix. Let's talk a little bit about um, using the water-soluble uh, worm compost tea. So today's January 17th and I started these plants back on December 20th. So it's been about four weeks since the seeds were put in, but it's not necessarily four weeks of growth because they germinate at different times. So the next video, and I want to talk about this because I just set up this bottom tray with the worm castings. In the next video I'm going to show you how to grow Shasta daisies, purple coneflower, oregano, um, that is rosemary, thyme, lavender, spearmint, I think this is verbena, another flower, and that is peppermint. And you can see that they're growing at different rates. Again, because I want to start out simple, there wasn't any uh, worm castings or any kind of fertilizer put in the starting mix. They were fed last week with a water-soluble fertilizer to use worm castings. And again, I'm going to switch over to what I like doing. That's one gallon of water. Uh, the casting directions are pretty simple. This is a concentrate, so don't pour this directly on your plants. Um, you know, one quart goes a long way. If you're doing this outside, it's six to seven ounces per gallon of water in a water container, water in, or in a, um, yeah, in a one gallon container, and then you can water in your plants outside. Indoors, I like to use about four ounces. It's a little bit less, and you could do this once a week if you want. You could do it every two weeks if you want. It really depends on what's growing and take a look at your plants. If they're looking healthy, they don't need more. To feed them with the worm casting tea. Just open up a hole. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. It's going to be a little messy. And put this in so that you fill the tray up. About a quarter of the way. And just let it absorb in. Put in a little bit less. If it absorbs quickly, you can add in a little bit more. Because of the casting tea, does have an odor to it. If you have a lot of excess, you don't want to throw it out and there's no place to put it. So put in a little bit less. If, if it absorbs quickly, add in a little bit more. Worm castings that are dry like this have no odor whatsoever. Um, they're just perfect for your starting mix. And that's all I do, really, is I use the worm castings to set up my starting mix and I use the worm casting tea about every week or two weeks after there's about three weeks of growth with my plants and that varies and I, again I'm a, am, uh, affiliated with Firmisterra. I'll put a code up and it's also in the description if you use the rusted garden you'll get a discount on their products so these were all started about 21 days ago and I'm going to show you how I grew these in my next video set up with starting mix with worm castings and the next videos are going to be really about the uh, perennial flowers, herbs, and mints. And I'm also going to be doing um, kind of a series within this series on how you can grow seed starts and make up to $1,000 selling them, you know, at your local flea markets, um, out of your driveway as a plant yard sale. But it's what I did years ago to really supplement my garden, get extra money to build things like my grow light stations. Hope you enjoyed the video. Gives you some confidence in using worm castings and worm casting tea. And if you're going to purchase those products, I really recommend Firmistera. Thanks for watching.